Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back with another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, February 21st, first day of the end of the world as far as YouTube and small uh, channels like mine, because we are now officially demonetized completely. So, if you ever loved my channel and wanted to go view videos without the ads, now is the time. Have at it. Go watch the Everything playlist or the Everything Old playlist combined and and just watch everything ad-free and we'll see if that stays. If you actually want to support me and, and help increase the chance of me not just getting frustrated and giving up one day, uh, the new monetization method is to request that people gift me games either directly by friending me on Steam or by direct messaging me on Twitter, Steam codes. It's gotta be Steam games, it doesn't particularly matter anything else unless I guess I just already have the game. If somebody gives me a Steam code and I already have the game, I can't really do much with that. Um, I started a little late today, you may notice on the, the chat that the mouse actually can't go over, uh, that I've got a poll for a slogan slash mo motto that I'm thinking about at some point adding, particularly to my banner ad on my main YouTube page, which most people never even reach, but the right now it just has my logo of Rhino. I'm thinking about bringing down the logo a little bit and having a motto, motto that would explain what my channel is at first glance and, and educate new viewers and see if they're interested. So the motto right now is in my head is on the top line to, for it to be calm, complete, and critical. And then on the next line, it's video game reviews and news. Uh, calm, because that's kind of a surprising description that a fan gave me. And, and when I thought about it and looked at it, it, in a weird way, it's kind of true. Like, I, I am a bit more calm than... Well, I'm a lot more calm than, say, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie. Some of these people who are just these fake high-energy uh, content. That's never probably... That's probably never going to be who I am. It's not something I really aspire to be. If I have to be somebody who is faking energy just to get viewers, then... That's going to f be a house of cards that just falls apart. Uh, complete, because I, for the most part, except for rage quits, which are pretty rare, uh, play a game all the way through. And critical, because I am always looking with a critical eye. This isn't content where I'm just playing Counter-Strike Go and just BSing and talking about whatever random stuff. Video game... Reviews, obviously, that's what I'm doing when I play a video game. I'm reviewing it in a very long form manner that's a little bit different than what most people do. And news, news is something new that we've had for the year or so uh, when we're doing the live streams. Well, I'm the Asian account on Hearthstone right now, and we need to win five Devon Balls and two Druid and Hunter games. Uh, pretty much or oh, play warlock cards we'll see what this tavern brawl is we need to get at the very least one tavern brawl for each of the accounts it's a little wild out there pick a class and we'll arm you with a wild deck fit for battle all right so let's just take hunter hunter wild deck should work just fine let's begin so I'm looking for feedback on that as a motto. If people think that there's some better phrases, like I could see it replacing all three of them and even adding maybe two more key words. Uh, if I start getting to the point where there's six, seven, or eight keywords, that's too many. This is supposed to be something, uh, something short and sweet. Uh, things that you, you probably have seen in other other organizational things like I uh, want to see an newest thing. Truth matters. Uh, an apple is an apple. 
uh, or something like that. Like, really short things, things that I could say, things that I might put into a, some kind of intro if I ever were to make an intro, which I'm not saying I'd ever actually do that, but I don't think I've ever had two alley cats um, in a deck just because I don't think I've ever gotten around to having two alley cats. Uh, video game reviews and news, there's really not not anything else that I aspire to to make on my channel. So I don't see how that would change uh, at the moment. Um, like, I suppose when I made the wheels on the bus Minecraft style as an experiment, that was original content that I made on my channel, but that's pretty much the only thing I've made in four years. Hmm. Tragic Masters on the chat, he goes, I like it. Playing games, getting blotto is my motto. Low, just K, not as classy as calm, complete, critical. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep it classy. Uh, I, I asked one of... Uh, I don't even want to know if I describe this person as my friends. One of my acquaintances in the real world. And I'll pull up what they told me to do. Which was rather insulting. And that's why I'm not saying that they're really my friend. Uh... They said, uh, n nobody wants calm, they want boisterous, biased bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fine, well, I'm not, that's not my channel. I, I am not boisterous. Uh, I'm, I do have some biases, certainly. Everybody has biases, and anybody who claims they don't have biases is, is, is lying to you. Uh, and while well, my... Many people may describe my content as BS. I don't go in from the perspective of of making BS. Uh, so yeah, that that was not helpful feedback because if somebody's telling me not to to change my channel, which is what I felt like that feedback was, that's not super helpful. Like I'm old enough to, to realize I'm too old to change uh, uh, like that's just not gonna happen I can I could make slow general changes but I'm not gonna do a 180 on my channel and and, and change things um, let's see I guess we're already like there's really not too much to talk about the the poll and really there isn't too much to even talk about YouTube right now demonetizing channels that they're saying that there's a bug that's that's messing up people's channels who I assume are supposed to be monetized where they're not monetized right now either uh, I wonder if half of the people who are complaining about them not being monetized are actually not uh, not monetized uh, I looked at one of the many pages on the YouTube my channel video manager th stuff one of the things about monetization and this may be a tip for anybody who, who does have 4,000 watch hours uh, is apparently you, you need to go in there and re-enable it from my channel so that it has a default uh, ha do you want overlay ads? Do you want non-skippable ads? Do you want at the beginning of the ads? Do you want at the end of the ads? Um, and so you have to set an enable default there as the third step before you can... Uh, be let's try Warlock, I guess. Um, before you can monetize. But uh, even once I enable that, the fourth step is you're not eligible until you have 4,000 watch hours, which turns out I only had 3,902. So I have the watch time. If anything, my content compared to what YouTube wants has way more watch time than it should. I, because they want you to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the past 12 months, hours, uh, 12 months. Which, if I almost have 4,000 
uh, watch hours, and I only have one fourth of the number of subscribers. If they just took that subscriber limit away, I'm getting four times the watch hour watch time than most people, than what YouTube wants as a bare minimum. My, in a weird way, they're kicking me out, but also telling me that my channel is actually very successful. It's it's really dumb, really really dumb. And if it was a either or thing, I mean, at the end of the day, I guess a thousand subscribers is not. A hard thing to fake uh, but but it's also not a hard uh, an easy thing to get well in the end this is all gonna blow up in their face uh, almost certainly and they're gonna have to backpedal and as they see the the quality of content fall lower and lower and uh, as more people abandon creating content on YouTube and more people abandon watching things and frankly I would personally like to see a backlash and I'm asking everybody to have an ad blocker on on YouTube completely starting now and if you happen to see a channel with less than 100,000 subscribers that's the point when you should opt in to turn off the ad blocker for uh, like a moment to watch ads on that person's channel um, let's see I guess I'll create a lesser potion I'll do that and then that hmm. so yeah I'm also would like to ask people that if you see somebody with less than a thousand subs subscribers and you just randomly see their video and you enjoy it at all, uh, subscribe to it. That's what I'm doing now. Like, if I see somebody, I, I just earlier today saw somebody with 24 subscribers. So I've subscribed to their channel. I probably will never go back to their channel ever again. I probably never view it. I'm just going to be a dead viewer. But that is what YouTube wants, and that's what everybody needs now, apparently, is to be, to have all their channels with uh, dead viewers that, that don't actually watch content. Uh, so, yeah. But, again, even though I talked about it, there's not, uh, there, there, there's not a lot to talk about it right now. Um, we shall see. Uh, they announced for the people who are still monetized that they're working on a way so less things get marked as advertiser unfriendly, uh, which is slightly helpful, I suppose. Uh, I apparently screwed up my Twitter a little bit in the notifications department, so I wasn't seeing people that were liking my videos uh, that I wasn't following, or people that may have commented on my videos for the past month. Um, that seems like... So if anybody feels like I ignored them, I apologize, I've corrected it. Y Twitter did something specifically where they they were just an giving me these notifications when two people I followed had a conversation bet between each other and like I didn't really want to see that but it was almost advertising because I kept saying I don't want to see this out of the pull down and they say you'll see less of this kind of like how Facebook often does that uh, that where it's just you'll see less of these ads you'll see less of these ads but you never see less of these ads it's really really irritating uh, but I think Twitter's kind of fixed it or I'll just have to live with it hmm. 
Tragic Master goes Reno Jackson. Was Reno Jackson played? I didn't even see it. Let's see. Let's start with the real news. Um, as far as games I've been playing on, nothing. I've it's been rainy. It's raining right now. It's been raining probably where I am for. Oh man, it's been like 16 hours straight of rain. It's it's not it's not great. It's dark. It's dreary and uh, uh, because of that and just because I've I've been kind of laid back, you know, not not super interested in playing Assassin's Creed. And Assassin's Creed is certainly part of it. I'm also not really doing the paperwork I need to do. So I've just been a lazy, lazy content creator for for a while now. Kind of since the beginning of the new year. Ever since this whole demonetization thing, that cut, cut the legs out of my content. But even then, before then, I was already exhausted by uh, just creating too much content and, and breaking breaking down um, and probably I should just take a vacation like a long term six month to, to a year of vacation that I can't afford to do uh, the, that's that's kind of where, where it is at right now um but yeah six months is probably even a little short i'm just a little the 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 honeymoon period of making a youtube channel is gone is the thing it, that's just not how it's gonna work for tap that I suppose we're playing the same deck effectively At last, hmm. so since taking a six month to two year vacation in which I do no work whatsoever and just sit around and wait until I get bored uh, is not reasonable I have to figure out a way to continue to create content even if it's if it's 30 minute instead of hour long content which is what I'm doing uh, with less time slots which is what I'm doing um, I still gotta figure out a way to maintain some pace and, and continue doing that there certainly has been some thoughts in my head about just going back to the old way of playing video games you know, sitting in silence and enjoying them for yourself. That's certainly what most video game players do. Uh, I'm not sure it's what I want to do anymore. Because uh, before I started this channel, I kind of was in a slump where I wasn't playing video games for myself at all. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if I just fell back into that slump hmm. so I don't know what I'm gonna do like every day with the live streams live streams are a big part of this they're at least three hours usually six to, to ten hours uh, Destroy a minion, one of your mana crystals. I take that. And heal that. So Yeah, the the idea of of doing any more content today is kinda out the window. I suppose I could kind of pivot. There's the giant bomb and the the, the beast. Not not the beast cast, but the bomb cast. The original one um, finally came out and and just fully admitted that they they've stopped doing 
reviews on video games. Not that they are 100% committed to not doing reviews on video games. They're just not interested right now since pretty much January. Since the end of last year, the Giant Bomb just has not been doing reviews on video games. Um, which we kind of knew. I talked about it. I noticed it certainly that they were were barely doing any quick looks and they were they weren't doing any like written reviews or anything it potentially pushes this fear since giant bomb got re well got absorbed by cbs that cbs is trying to uh slowly move everything in the game spot and merge the two and just kind of move the viewership over from the fans of Giant Bomb into GameSpot, which uh, might work to a certain percentage. Uh, and then we'll just slowly see people either getting transferred over to GameSpot or uh, or people just getting fired. Or, and it just is a very slow process. We've seen that with Comic Vine. Like, while I really don't miss uh, G-Man from Heck, who was the person who was running Comic Van, because I found him annoying. He he really did. Uh, Comic Vine went from kind of a robust niche website to doing less and less articles and making less and less content and making fewer and fewer videos. Well, I mean, most a lot of people probably wouldn't have even remembered that they did make videos at all. Uh, and uh, eventually Tony Guerrera, which is G-Man from Hack, uh, got fired and that ended the Comic Vine podcast it, right with that. So uh, after that, there's just kind of like a temporary guy who's now in charge of Comic Vine at last I heard. And I barely see any articles or anything from them, so I don't know if they're really doing much content at all. And all of it got moved. Um, it all got kind of moved over to Game Inform or GameSpot 2. GameSpot is just kind of everything. Tragic Master came on and went, what? Good game. Good luck on the pack. Thanks, Tragic Master. Let's see. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what, what to really say there, uh, the comic, the giant bomb that I loved is just not in existence anymore because the person who was in charge of that giant bomb died and the, while it took a lot of time to realize that giant bomb kind of died with him. It kind of did, and I mean, uh, it, it's hard to to make any any argument that that it didn't. Um, and for a long time, there was this fake giant bomb that I liked after after that point, uh, but. Slowly and surely, new people came in, and attitudes changed. And people who were really playing games and talking about games are not really playing games and talking about games, and they're they're pretending like their personalities uh, when they they barely actually have any personality, in my opinion. And that's probably saying a lot coming from me, who could make a very similar arguments. Uh, have the same arguments thrown against them. Hmm. I have to get five victories on the tavern brawl, so we're making progress. Hmm. The ESA has argued against a DMCA exemption for abandoned online games. So the ESA is the Entertainment Software Association. Uh, that I believe runs 
the rating system it's a lobbyist group let's let's just put it out straight it is a lobbyist group for the video game industry um, and they don't want as I understand it the Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment made uh, who wants to they want to preserve and and they're arguing I think they that the museum wants to let people play these online games in the museum so they'd be running their own custom server for these abandoned online games um, and our, one would assume that this isn't like version one of World of Warcraft because there would be other issues there uh, that would could easily be made to say that World of Warcraft isn't abandoned because there's actually a significant uh, World of Warcraft newer version still running. It would have to be something that is completely abandoned. Like, there's nothing close to it running. Uh, and the thing here is the, the law says you can't tamper with DM, DRM protected content. Uh, but those rules are revised every three years. Um, it really, this gives kind of an unfair advantage to anybody to put in even the worst possible DRM you could think of. Something that just doesn't work at all. But because it's a felony to, to even try and hack it, you immediately get entered into the realm of being an illegal hacker as soon as you even consider that. So, so you're so there's this unfair advantage there. Uh, this this same law is the thing that it, they are trying to make it impossible to fix tractors by putting software in every single component and putting DRM on every single piece of the software on tractors. So uh, a simple replacement of a fuse or something might, uh, well, probably not a fuse, but a, a component might require cracking the DRM. Um, a better example is the printer companies putting DRM on their ink cartridges so that they won't play generics. And we had to fight to get the right for generics to work, and I'm not even sure we got that. Um, let's see. So. The museum asked the copyright office to give them an exemption, to make an exemption for online games, so that they could show off abandoned online games. That's that's the idea. And instead of letting that just happen, the ESA has challenged it uh, because this could facilitate commercial infringement. Their argument is because the, the museum's would as ask you for an entrance fee for the museum then you're effectively running a business and because you're running a business you're not a museum anymore um, uh, there's there's certainly also some some problems and issues with the fact that uh, that Activision Blizzard has been actively trying to stop um, stop vanilla World of Warcraft servers from existing, and now because they're finally coming out with something that looks like a vanilla World of Warcraft server, that they're afraid that they're going to potentially lose sales. Because museums might be able to show the actual original vanilla World of Warcraft servers, uh, it's really ridiculous. And frankly, 
even if there was this fantasy land where there was a video game museum in that popped up in every single city how many kids in the United States would actually go to that museum on the daily basis that it would be required to to go to to play an MMO and I mean how how many other MMOs could people could be there like assuming land cafes opened up and called themselves museums and let's say that they're all huge land cafes with a hundred computers in them uh, and these land cafes that call themselves museum were running World of Warcraft version 1 vanilla uh, so what you couldn't probably connect it to the internet the museum would probably wipe your your progress after a day or two or a month they're not gonna save all that information and you're not really going to be playing against a massive multiplayer audience in fact it's actually an incredibly boring concept to play in an abandoned MMO uh, people would if you even let them have the controllers which most museums I bet they won't even put a controller in front of people it'll just be something on the screen that shows footage of an old MMO uh, but uh, they're, they're really this this really is a ridiculous argument uh, that they're trying to make but they want to keep all the rights this is the Disney wants copyright to go on forever argument they, they just want to they, Activision Blizzard wants to be able to sell you the same thing over and over again and uh, that's exactly what they're doing for the most part is uh, selling the same thing over and over again let's play this actually let's not play it and Um, I th think the copyright office, well, who knows, but in general, it tends to be a little bit kinder to the museums and not as kind to corporations as several other agencies of the government, which are all pro-business. So we might see this DMCA exemption for abandoned online games. Uh, yeah, at the very least you would get the exemption and then you would have companies come back and try and argue that their game is not doesn't qualify because it's not actually abandoned uh, worst case scenario this might also force people to to cover and or bring back content that they've been sitting on uh, just to make sure they maintain the copyright on it. Let's see. Let's see. Tragic Master goes, My f first LAN was in 1997. Team Fortress Original Good Times. 1999. Sorry. Okay. 99. 97. Hmm. I just jokingly told uh, somebody on Facebook, one of my friends, that nothing good happened in the 90s. Uh, because they they left their phone their cell phone at home and, and they're saying they're gonna have to pretend like they're they're in, living in the 90s uh, uh, and team fortress is a great example of that's not a game that this exemption would even be covering like I think if Team Fortress original qualified as being abandoned which it would be hard to make that argument as it is still I believe on sale on Val on Steam if it, if Team Fortress was abandoned you um, a museum could show that right now it's just the fact that that there's some DRM 
specifically in MMOs, online games. Uh, you could probably play Tim Fortress and many of those other LAN games that didn't require a server. It's the server part that you know that people are going to have to reverse engineer and have made progress on reverse engineering. Hmm. Uh, Tragic Master goes Nokia 5190 low. Low. Hmm. Yep. Let's see. Let's move on from this because that, I, I suppose, there, there's really no way to contact the copyright office and I let yourself know. be known. I, I, I guess they don't take random comments. Which kind of sucks. I'd like to see all the government agencies try to be more open and take random comments so we could we could barricade we could yell at them and tell them what the people actually want instead of just getting the access um, and make, make the people who are in government actually listen to the, the people's will instead of lobbyists will but it, it, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen in this case. Deal. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, Tragic Master says cell phone from the 90s. Well. It's, it's kind of amazing because in my lifetime, computers, personal computers were probably very expensive, but, but you could spend $3,000 to $10,000 when I was first born to buy a PC. And now you could spend about $500 to get a PC. So the lifetime of PCs being a thing has expanded probably my entire lifetime whereas cell phones most definitely did not exist in any realistic form when i was born and we've now hit a point where i would heavily argue that cell phones have hit a maturation point where you get a cell phone and it's good enough. Like, I'm not to the point, I really don't think you need to buy a new cell phone every two years, every year. Uh, I know Apple certainly wants you to do that, but, uh, but it doesn't feel like that is actually a necessary thing. Um, whereas when I first got cell phone, uh, my first cell phone was the Google what was it google g1 uh phone uh, yeah that's what what it was so i had the very first google phone and now i have a samsung s7 and i really don't see a reason why i'd want to get an s8 i really don't see a reason what why i'd want to get an s9 and they're just announcing the s9 like eventually i know the s7's battery will just die and and since it's a built-in battery it's not really at once it does die it's probably not worth the effort to to put in a new battery on an old component but we've kind of topped out on you have about four gigabytes of ram you have about 32 to 128 gigabytes of storage space in your cell phone uh, it uh, you have usually a quad core processor or maybe it's an eight core processor but four of the cores are are lower speed so they save you battery things uh, speeds on the, the processors are somehow calculated to to 1.2 gigahertz or, or around there uh, and I think if it if cell phones went up to 2.4 gigahertz processors it would probably just kill the uh, uh, hmm. Demon, demon, demon. Sure. I am the 
I'll play that. Um, they 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 have all some. Uh, most cell phones these days have very good cameras on them, very good storage. Usually some expandable storage too, so you can put a micro SD in it. USB C has, in a in a weird way, fixed uh, fixed one of the worst things. Uh, perhaps we've lost the the IR blasters and the the headphone jacks on cell phones and that's kind of the only thing I want uh, IR blaster FM FM things so you can listen to radio uh, um, but not not too much else that I even care about. Uh, so, like, I'm so satisfied with a cell phone, and if I wasn't a video game streamer, uh, honestly, I don't think I would have too much need for a PC at all, if I wasn't playing video game P video games on the PC. Uh, I could see myself just living with a cell phone and having a console. Uh, let's see. Warriors of the Frozen. So yeah, I'm I'm very in awe how fast technology comes, and that probably indicates that if the like smartwatches ever become a thing that are very ambiguous, like everybody has a smartwatch, I I think we'll see technology increase very quickly in that realm. Uh, there's a certain level in which processors just can't get any faster because they get too hot, they use too much power. There's a certain level where technology is taking a little bit longer than I would like to get smaller and smaller. Uh, theoretically, I might live long enough to see atomic scale, uh, one Buna atom thick. Uh, technology or subatomic technology uh, but even at that without major improvements in efficiency of the layouts and the circuitry we still may not see devices that do a significant amount of things uh, that we want them to do without it taking up a significant amount of space uh, at a certain point if they could ever figure out quantum entanglement to a practical and uh, manipulatable form, we could potentially have cell phone devices that are connected to through quantum entanglement to some base station somewhere, and and you just have this power station that is doing all your processing for you, and your cell phone is always getting improved and it's getting faster connections and everything without you having to upgrade your receiver device. Uh, one would assume that the tablet pads in Star Trek, for example, were connected to the giant computer that was always implied to be on the inside of a starship in Star Trek shows. Uh, they never really show the computers because the, the implication was that the computer was actually all of the walls around everything, every single panel, every single thing, uh, was interconnected. Um, at least that's kind of how I understood it. I guess I need to move on with the news though instead of just kind of talking. Tragic Master says, I want to see VR start using quantum computing lol. That would be sick. Yeah, I suppose the interface with the human could be improved, certainly. Uh, it's just, it's, it's really down to, uh, down to what will happen and what, and how long it will take. Uh, as far as technology goes, I, I am 
pretty certain that I'm I'm gonna die happy with the level of technology as long as we don't run into a scenario where like, like some kind of computer virus or something destroys all our technology and we have to go back to to rubbing sticks together to make fire. Uh, this and I guess I have to do this that didn't work well hmm. tragic master says like Stephen Hawking how do we know it's him talking and that he's not been hijacked by a computer look into his eyes they say help me just K. JK. Yeah, I've I've heard that joke before. Um, um, I think inherently to answer that question for no real reason since it's a joke, uh, we know it's Stephen Hawking talking because he actually teaches college and and goes on long Speeches, and I assume he takes questions and interacts with people. So, I you could make that assumption if he was just wheeled out and gave two-hour speeches to everybody, uh, and then took no questions and had no interaction or whatsoever. But, like, if anything, we could make the argument for many politicians that just have teleprompters. Like, how do we know that they're they're not? Their loved ones aren't in danger, and uh, and they're being held hostage to say the the things on the teleprompters. Uh, we just kind of have to assume. Tragic Master says, "I heard w worse, but keeping it PG low." Yep. I still, every time I think about Stephen Hawking, he, he managed with, I believe he has ALS, uh, uh, being completely wheel, wheelchair bound. Mm -hmm. He still managed somehow to cheat on his wife. <laughs> like, how, you've got to just applaud that, uh, uh, play, players be playing, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> like, how in the world... Do you pull off that feat? Anyways, moving on with news uh, before we break up this recording. I'm going to get really good at breaking up recordings nowadays. Uh, I'm tired of screwing it up and and just staying for an extra hour and having, having it all messed up. The co-founders of Sledgehammer Games, uh, Glenn Sheffield and Michael Condry, have left the studio. Uh, which, it doesn't look good for Sledgehammer because th what this means is two of the co-founders of Sledgehammer that I think was probably acquired by Activision, Activision Blizzard, uh, parent company of the people who make, make this game. I think they're probably working to potentially shut down all of uh, like shut down all of the the production of games in there and lay off and shutter that company. That's what it feels like to me. I could be wrong. And they were both part of visceral games which made um, which made dead space so th these these two people uh, left visceral games after dead space one or two or three and they made sledgehammer games in 2009 and then they made they uh, worked with Activision to make the Call of Duty universe and uh, let's see 
They were co-developer for in, with Infinity Ward for Modern Warfare 3, so and that led on to Advanced Warfare and World War II. Now they've both been promoted effectively to some higher management level in Activision, but not a significantly high management uh, level, which is which is confusing. Certainly, I must be they're, they're not the now. CEOs. They're, they're not not being the the co CEOs or CFOs of of Activision. They're just something something that's not even getting really mentioned as some some new level. So this means like Sledgehammer Games some changes certainly will happen even if Sledgehammer Games stays around. So your Call of Duty World War II something's gonna change there. Uh, almost certainly. Let's see. So, but, but in a weird way, this is also kind of just some speculation news <laughs> as much as anything because we're not getting any real, real information to report on. Like, something has happened. They've let, they've moved to their positions. And I'm speculating that this is the beginning of something much bigger, but, uh, but I really can't say for certain that that's actually true. From the void I come. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, there, there probably is going to be another Call of Duty game, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's pretty different. Uh, tragic. Let's see. Tragic Master said, ALS, life expectancy, look it up and wonder. Uh, good job, Hawking. Yep. Yep, he's lived really, really long. Gotten very lucky. Tragic Master also says, Sledgehammer, I remember that name. Uh, when I hear Sledgehammer, I, I, I think of that song that was on MTV uh, in Claymation. Uh, from the 80s. Uh, but, but then again, I guess I'm also not so much of a Call of Duty player. Well, why am I even saying much? I've literally never played any of the Call of Duty games. And I have no interest in them. Let's see. Death Rattle. Who are we going to kill? Still trying to play here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and close that news. PC Gamer has an advertisement review called Dino Run 2 is a procedurally generated 2D runner with plenty of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. I can see how that was interesting. Uh, the, let's see. It's a Kickstarter game, not quite so quite. it's getting just advertised. It's not out. It doesn't seem like it has a release date or anything. And it's just a picture of some relatively nicely computer animated dinosaurs, <laughs> the old school dinosaurs, which I think inherently you, you kind of have, have some problem now making a dinosaur game and not putting feathers on it. Let's see, at the random menu, demons to your hand. Deal eight damage. Hmm. And. We're gonna be rich. We'll just play that. Right. 
any endless runner game is inherently procedurally generated so that doesn't mean anything it being two-dimensional doesn't really mean anything and honestly like if there already is a dino run one why do they need to go to kickstarter to make another one and that answer me that one Let's see deal eight damage add three random demons to your hand deal three damage to everybody all right let's do this Uh, the Batmobile is coming to Rocket League as part of the DC Super Heroes DLC pack. So if you wanted to play some Rocket League with the Batmobile, that's cool. Uh, apparently there's also some decals um, and banners for Aquaman, Batman, Cyborg. The DC player banner alone, Flash, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Superman. I could name several things that aren't getting mentioned here uh, that are in the DC universe, but I guess was that really matter? Um, the things like when you talk about Superman, you can also do Superboy, Supergirl, and Crypto. And those are popular characters. When you talk about Batman, then you have Batman, Batgirl, Batwoman, Nightwing, uh, Grayson Todd, uh, Red Robin, uh, and also, let's face it, Batman also has the best villain with the Joker, and uh, when you start talking that. Uh, Flash has some slightly memorable, but if cartoony, villains. Um, and Green Arrow, I don't think really has anything. Green Lantern, though, like as soon as you throw in Green Lantern, there's four different Green Lanterns, and that have had that title, at least. And then there's all kinds of other colors, like besides Green Lantern, there's Red Lanterns, Black Lanterns, Yellow Lanterns, uh, Wonder Woman. Like Wonder Woman is probably the worst as far as of uh, secondary characters uh, with like her main villain being like Cheetah uh, or maybe on the newer stories it's Hades and the Greek gods that she's fighting hmm. Hmm. Job's done. Hmm. well these cars are they look nicely animated. I mean, it's something nice to look at. And if Rocket League is the new car game for kids, this makes a lot of sense. If you came in here and tried to do the Marvel people, you could certainly do the same for Spider-Man, Iron Man, um, Captain America, Hulk, things like that. Whatever the... The rest of the Avengers are people who've gotten their movies. Uh, speaking of racing games, Burnout Paradise Remastered is coming to the Xbox One and PS4 next month. And the PC version is getting like an update later on. Uh, it is going to cost $35 and it is going to come to PC via Origin later this year. Uh, uh, unlike the Burnout Paradise Ultimate box, which is currently on Steam, however, the new PC remaster will increase, include the previously console-only Big Surf Island expansion. So, I might be in a weird position, because if I don't want to deal with Origin, which I don't, uh, then I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to stick with a lesser version of Burnout Paradise, which, you know, I only have so much time in my life to play racing games anyways, 
and I've already gone down the dust, uh, dirt rabbit hole. Uh, so, right now, Burnout Paradise Ultimate Box is in twenty dollars. But it, uh, if you want the EA Racing Pack from me, at least that would be sixty dollars. This came out several years ago, like 2009. Yeah, getting a non remastered version seems like an unfair advantage, so I don't know what, what or how you fix that. If I do this, and then do 12, and then do 3. But that wouldn't have done enough damage to win. So, I guess right now I'm gonna follow this and take Burnout Paradise off my wish list as I'm better curating that. Um, yeah, after that first video of going through my wish list and on on the first seller, I. I, I went through it and did some some major curation to to think about like does this game really even deserve or need to be in in my my list actually this isn't gonna work is it I'll have to do that later because it, there was a decent number of games once I looked at them that I I thought you know what these are just gonna irritate me. I know I'm not gonna have fun. Um, so, so I I tried to clear clear that off and do a better job. This is slightly strange, uh, in my opinion. Deal three damage to all minions. I guess I could have killed that guy that way. Um. The short film for the video game Papers, Please uh, is going to debut on YouTube this weekend and a Steam release is going to follow shortly after that. Uh, so, YouTube, February 24th. Um, the filmmakers announced on Facebook is when it's going to come out. You probably have to do a little bit of searching. It seems like a very odd way to to release this because I thought the short film was going to get a little bit more coverage than that and not just show up on YouTube. I, Almost out of I thought it was going to actually hit some independent film festivals first, maybe even make it to theaters in a small release. Uh, I guess it's overhyped. The movie is only about 10 minutes in length according to this. So, like, like, I suppose the problem here, if if you even want to call it a problem, is that you, you really can't have a, a video that's as, as, as short as it is. Well, you really can't do much more with Paper Please. Uh, and I thought they were going to try, but uh, I guess they couldn't succeed there. Like, you really needed to take the general concept of somebody working as a Borderlands Custom Enforcement Agency in some dystopian Soviet country who's getting different rules every day and potentially letting in terrorists and potentially uh, taking bribes to work for the other side. There, there certainly were stories there that could have been written, but... I'm not gonna do this. I need to break up a recording. Uh, let's go ahead and open our pack. But they didn't expand it into a two hour story, which it needed to be. It needed to be a two hour tale of somebody who is experiencing most of what you experience playing that game. Uh, as it stands, spending 10 minutes to watch the live action version versus playing the game, I think you inherently are better off playing the game. Hey, I got an epic. Uh, 
if if anything i would i would say that this 10 minute intro might be good to just integrate into the beginning of the main game but then it probably is too good looking and would disappoint people after watching 10 minutes of the video to realize that they are playing an 8-bit graphics game so two of those cards were new in that pack it seems all right we're doing good and it's kind of interesting that we're about at 4,000 gold on each account because I would have thought my main account should be a couple hundred higher and it might be that's gonna be it for this recording stay tuned if you're watching live as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below if you like what I'm doing and want to support me, give me a game on Steam. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.